our new year. Um, it's usually celebrated in April around the 14th um, and I think it marks the end of the dry season and the start of the rainy season and um, it's like a water zone festival and that's a similarity that's throughout Southeast Asia, it, um, I think some parts of Vietnam celebrate it, Thailand celebrates it with water flowing, um, Burma, Myanmar, they do as well and I know this very southern region of China um, in Yunnan, they celebrate it as well. Um, um, it's great fun um, you think it's all about with lo uh, as lots of festivals that happen in the spring throughout different religions they're all about renewal and rebirth and stuff and I think water is sort of about like cleansing and new starts um, but it is so much fun I mean I've only been in Laos one time for it so I can only speak for one experience um, when I was a child but you literally walk down the street and it's just like the world's biggest water fight. Um, I remember being in a restaurant and waiters coming up behind us with like buckets of water and just tipping them over our heads. People with like water guns in the streets. Someone even shampooed my hair. Like, because you're just so wet, they just start like shampooing you. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it really is like every single person participates and there'll be a huge parade that goes through the street. Um, with like mugs and yeah it's not just a few people having like a lot of ideas yeah. it's just events everyone joins in um there are more sort of traditional and religious aspects to it as well um but i've sort of gone over the fact that i didn't really grow up in that culture so for me that's not a huge part of it although it is for everyone it's like a national holiday it's you know um everyone goes to the temple and praise um, but yeah for me it's just sort of like a fun thing a nice opportunity to share dinner with friends to cook our food and sort of share my culture with my friends or family yeah. um, this year it falls around the same time as Easter so um, I don't have any huge plans for it I think um, I'll probably cook for some friends as I said um, make some lark some sticky rice um, there's someone that I met in London, sort of through online, um, who, she's Australian now, um, and a few years ago we celebrated together and she sort of taught me um, some cooking and I ordered some beer lao from the internet. Also in Lao people love beer lao, like it's as cheap as water. <laughs> um, and there's like a retailer online where you can order it, so I might order that again. I think there is actually a... Um, I don't plan to go myself, but I think up Liverpool way, there's a temple where there'll be some sort of celebration that I heard about um, last year, so I assume they're doing it again. Um, and again in London, I think there's one at the temple there as well. Ah, what do I love most about Songkra? I think, you know, it's just a celebration. I think it's just a really joyous celebration. Um, you know, for people who don't know too much about Songkra, so it is the Thai New Year. Um, although they do celebrate the, the new year that we all come to know and love, which is on the 31st of December, 1st of January. But, you know, within the Thai Buddhist calendar, Songkran is um, the 13th to the 15th. Um, it's usually mid-April. The dates change. Um, but it's a big celebration. And, and what is centered around that is water. Um, there's another festival, um, Loi Kratong which is celebrated in November time, and that's centered around water too. So water is really uh, kind of fundamental to the Thai culture. But what we do in Songkran is, you know, it's just loads of food. You know, as you could imagine, you know, Thai people love their food, Asian people love their food. Um, so there's just loads of dishes everywhere. And, you know, where the water plays in is typically, if you go to Thailand or in Songkran, um, there's just water fights in the streets, you know, you could be walking along, you may be wanting to go to the local shopping center and somebody is going to throw a bucket of water over you. Um, and it is just mayhem, you know, it, it, it's so fun. It's just so joyous. It's crazy. It's a bit hectic, but it's just kind of a big party. And, you know, it's just a big water fight in the street. So, you know, I, I love Songkran for that reason. Um, I'm going to hold my hands up. I've never actually been to Thailand during Songkran, but, uh, you know, 
we'll try to do what we can to celebrate it here. And I love cooking Thai food. So usually every Song Khan, uh, I'll cook big feasts um, of Thai food and, in you know, and that's just a way to celebrate. It would be kind of, it would be a bit lunacy. I'd probably get arrested if I went out into the street and, you know, threw, threw water over somebody. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's about playing the small parts. So I'll just cook a lot of Thai food and, you know, we'll pay our respects in terms of the new year there and celebrate it within the intimacy of, you know, a very close social circle and within my own home. And then, yeah, in terms of the communities that happen, there's quite a few. Then you know, the UK has a big Thai community, although you probably wouldn't know it if you weren't within those circles. But there are always events happening um, around the UK, uh, obviously weather permitting. Um, but yeah, you know, there's there's things that mark the occasion around that. It would be great if we could do more of it and actually get it into mainstream, um, because like you said. You probably wouldn't know of it um, if you weren't in those social circles. And it would be a really great, I think it's such a really great celebration to be able to start to publicize a little bit more and just give people awareness. There's so many other religious cultures that we talk around, which is fantastic, but it would be good to kind of mark a Buddhist uh, celebration within that as well.